So you guys have heard about this thing. It's absolutely insane. There's all these crazy new trolling motors coming out to the market. And this right here, I have a Lowrance Ghost. Super fired up about it. And what I notice is when you go on YouTube, there are literally no install videos on this thing, zero. So what we're gonna do today, I'm with my buddy Nathan Martin right here. What's up? We are going to mount this joker on my Triton, go through the steps, how to get it tweaked, how to get it set up, all for you, so let's get to it. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe video. You ready to get rolling? Let's do it. All right. So as I mentioned, we are at C Clear Power. If you guys want to get your graphs rigged up, if you guys want to get trolling motor work, trolling motor work done, like your ghost put on, or any kind of like technical trolling motor, the, the new ones that are out with the spot locks and the crazy graph integration, if you just need some, some like very professional level rigging, come see these guys. This is Sea Clear Power Marine to Scumbia, Alabama. It's my boy Nathan Martin. You can find him. Where are you at on Instagram, dude? Nathan Martin Fishing, Sea Clear Power. Sea Clear Power. Yeah. What's the website for Sea Clear if people want to come and check it out? SeaClearPower.com. S E A ClearPower.com. I like it when it's simple. So we're gonna get to it. The first step in doing this trolling motor, and I feel terrible because I'm shooting a video and these guys are doing work. I need to get to work, but we need to rip my Minn Kota Fortrex off the boat. And I don't mean that literally. We're gonna get it unscrewed. We're basically gonna get this entire bow of the boat ready for the ghost. And that's the first thing that you gotta do. One thing to note that's pretty cool is the ghost actually has the same screw pattern as your, as your Minn Kota trolling motors. So it's gonna be super easy to get this thing rolling. All right, let's get this thing unboxed here. So we'll give you guys an initial look. We got the prop right here. There's some safety packaging. There's the motor right there, head of the motor. We got the pedal right here. And then there's the head. And then we're gonna have to crack these boxes open to get out any kind of like accessories and, and mounting hardware that's in there. So it's funny as you go through this process, you, you kind of notice like some things that weren't done exactly right. See how that oxidation in there, guys? So it's funny because Nathan's like, it's a wonder your trolling motor is even working, dude. You're talking all that smack. But it, it's really important. You want to use stainless on this, but this is another illustration of why, like, in the end, it does cost money, but coming to somebody who's an expert and having them do it means you don't end up with something like this down the road. We're going to get this thing soldered in and, and set in there right, and it's going to be good for years upon years upon years. We have arrived at step, I guess this will be like real step one. So we got the old Minn Kota off. She is gone and over there. Anybody looking to buy a Minn Kota Fortrex 112, hit me up. Drop it down in the comments box. We have this guy here. So the first step that we need to do is we need to get this bracket out and get the motor out. And the motor's attached to the pedal. And we're going to get that thing mounted on here. Like I said, the screws are going to line up. And then Nathan's screwing with it right now. We're prepping these wires for soldering. Um, it's gonna be an extremely strong connection and it's gonna avoid any of that oxidation that you saw when you know we had non-expert insulation on the last one. Right. So let's go through the process, guys. We're going to pop that key, that safety latch key, and then Nathan, you're gonna go ahead and draw that cable and we're just gonna keep pressure on it so it doesn't go shooting up and open it up and then we can kind of see our bolt pattern right here and uh, move forward. One key thing, do not forget this because I, as a non-professional, forgot this a million times. You're going to want to make sure you put that strap, that's a security strap, under that bracket before you go ahead and screw the bracket down. Otherwise, well, you're going to have to take that bracket off. So just slide it under. It goes behind the second and third, or in between the second and third screws. Right down there, you can see it lined up. And that's just to kind of secure your trolling motor when you're going on like a long ride. Like, say, when I go down to Florida and stuff like that, you lock that trolley down. So the next step, once we get this thing lined up, is we're actually going to put the lock wash or the lock nuts on there. Uh, yeah, you got it in your hand. It doesn't matter. But have somebody down there with, what is it, 7 16 7 wrench. Um, you can use a screw gun or an impact like this, and you want that extended bit, and... So a quick note as we move forward with this installation, it does come with these rubber gasket washers. So what these are for, if you read the, the instruction manual for the installation, on some boats, and I believe in particular it's a Ranger, the, the ghost doesn't line up evenly with the way the, the hull is, or you need it raised a little bit so you can put your um, support bracket in there. So you use these guys, they're, they're non-essential, they're optional. 
use these guys to kind of kind of as shims to kind of lift the motor up in certain places and make sure it's it's flush against the um, the hull right there the hull right there I'm, I'm super smooth make sure it's flush and make sure it, it sets in nice so the motor goes down vertically at a 90. All right, guys, before we go ahead and we actually drop the motor on this mount, we got everything set up, our security strap, we got our, our bracket all sealed down with the lock washers. The next thing you wanna do, the, the Ghost comes with these, these cable management things, and basically they're for, to protect that, that cable that goes to the pedal, because it is an electronic device, you know, like you don't want crimps in it, you don't want bends in it, it needs like management as it runs up the, the uh, bracket of the trolling motor. So what they do is they give you these cable management guys, and you are going to locate your two screw holes right here and take this guy and pop it right through the back just like that you know hold that for me Nathan perfect and then we're going to set these guys right on there just like this and they come with a little hex key you're gonna need an eight millimeter hex key or Allen wrench and then you just tighten them right on down and those will grab your cables once you run them so we're gonna get them set up so basically that's what your cable management is going to look like. You want them snug, but you still want them to be able to spin and rotate a little bit. So we got those ready to go. Let's get this trolley on. We're going to mount this motor now. Basically it's a drop in. So you're going to kind of drop it in. There's some teeth in there that it's going to grab to. Ironically, it is kind of like mounting like a Fortrex or an Altrex. And you just kind of jostle it a little bit and then she will finally catch on there just like that. Then you're going to have these two hex screws right here that we're going to go ahead and drop in and that's going to lock the motor in place biggest thing right now is when you drop that motor on you want to make sure two things you want to make sure you're at a good 90 with the front of the boat and that ensures that the trolling motor is going to run correctly and then you also want to make sure and it sounds kind of stupid but always keep it in mind you need to make sure that that motor bracket for the actual head of the motor is extended off the front of the boat you don't want that shaft hitting the boat or super close to the boat because it's going to impede how that trolling motor works so there's a lift assist hydraulic mount or cylinder that, that goes on. Basically what that does is it helps you to lift up the trolling motor because it's pretty heavy, the head of the trolling motor in that. And it drops through and mounts. You can kind of get a little vision. Nathan's holding onto it right there. And then it gets screwed down and drops into that other little slot right down there. And you can tell this is why it's a two-person job. You really need a bunch of hands that know what they're doing to get it set up just right because there's a little bit of jostling for all of this. You can see how the cylinder is mounted. You just put those nuts through and fix it in. What do you got to wear? She's all yeah. set just like that with a couple Phillips screws. So what we're doing is we are measuring the length of our stabilizer. And basically that's just a support kind of tube. It's like a metal tube that we're going to saw down because it comes at a generic length. So we got the stabilizer on. Basically you use that nut to kind of lock it up. Let's, let's bring it down and see if she locks. Oh, that is the sound of music right there. That clicking sound is the bracket engaging and locking up so it knows you have the correct length on the stabilizer. We're, uh, we're making progress. So we're jumping steps. We're gonna do some wiring here, but I wanna show you a little step Nathan took, which is super cool. So we're talking about and doing some planning on mounting the puck, which is like the GPS signal thing. So Nathan, you got a really cool app on your phone, and what are you testing for right there? Uh, magnetic interference. So, so what does that do to the puck? If I have magnetic interference, that means I'm not going to have GPS, I'm not going to have spot lock. It'll, you'll have it, it just won't be accurate. And then it'll, over time, burn up your... Really? Uh, yeah. All right, so that's something to keep in mind. Once again, a reason you have experts do it, but make sure you're testing for any kind of magnetic interference before you, you kind of locate this puck and figure out where you want it on the bow. So right now we're crimping in our wires, and this is just basically going to give a guide. You're going to be soldering this thing, right? Yeah, that's correct. So we're going to solder them in and then we're going to put a little cover over them so they're nice and protected. That's going to reduce any kind of interference as well as any kind of oxidation that we run into like we saw in that old, um, that old connector box. So once we got these jokers all soldered together, we're going to go ahead and put just a you know, simple heat shrink over them. Like this is super duper professional, man. Those things are never going to see water. They're never going to get damp. It's going to keep them nice tight and locked up. So we're gonna mount this puck and I'm all about wire management. So I'm actually, yeah, sacrilege. So we're, we're hole sawing, uh, I think it's a five eighths ounce hole down into the, the bow right there. And the reason that we're gonna do that is I wanna be able to actually run this plug for the puck right here down into the hole, the hull of the boat, down into the, the nose of the boat and run it through and bring that wire all the way back through and to the trolling motor. 
and that way those cables aren't all over the place dangling around. It just keeps it clean. So we're gonna take this puck. We got our hole saw hole right there. We're gonna slide that cable right on through and thread it on through. And we're gonna run that. I actually have a hole for my trolling motor right down here in the foot pedal. So we're gonna run it actually all the way around to the pedal so we can plug it in. All right, so you want to make sure the puck arrow is straight and then you're sinking these guys in. Don't make up, oh, maybe a little bit tight, but we're gonna loosen them up. Maybe if we need to readjust, we'll see how this one goes in real quick. Basically, there's an arrow right here. You wanna make sure that's 100% parallel with the tip of the boat. You also wanna make sure that this puck is completely perpendicular. You don't want it tilted. Uh, with the boat, you want it perpendicular to the boat, so it's shooting straight up. And that's what we did. We actually put like a little bit of, I use actually shower pan. It's kind of a little modified rig. It's almost like a rubber washer or a gasket to make sure that we were level there. So the first thing we did is we attached our puck. There's a bunch of cables that come off this pedal. You have your puck cable, your sonar cable, and then your NEMA 2000 cable. And you have to get them all connected. And like we talked about, wire management is hugely important. And if you take your time during these steps, you're not gonna have all this clutter and all this junk around. You're also gonna have your stuff organized. So if you ever do have any kind of problem, you know where it's at and you can address it. So if you guys look down here, what I've done is you have an adapter for your sonar plug. Take a look down here. I'm running that through my Bass Boat Technologies bracket, and then I'm gonna find the other end, which is right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna thread that back around, and it needs to come out to the trolling motor pedal. So it's gonna be a little bit hard to see, but I'll show you the, the finished product once we get there. So I'm gonna bring that out to my trolling motor pedal, and then I'm gonna identify my trolling motor um, sonar plug, which, is, geez, did I do it right the first time? I did it right the first time. So this guy right here, and then we're gonna plug those together. And now we're gonna move on to the NEMA 2000. All right, so the next scale we're gonna hook up is the, the NEMA 2000. And this is where I actually, you know, full frontal here, yeah, full frontal, you like that. Um, I made a mistake. And, and Nathan, he's an expert with not only Lawrence, but just like the NEMA technology and the networks. And basically you have to set these T's up so that they are in line. Nathan, what do you mean by inline, just to clarify for people? Well, you just want your, when you're building your NEMA system, you always want it to go in one straight line across, and so if it's a power wire, your power wire can come into here, but all your accessories need to come off, the, off of the T. Okay. And each T needs to be in line with each other. So you just kind of want it as one big chain, that's the way mm -hmm. it should look when you're, yeah. okay, that makes a lot of sense. So, most important part, we are making some super duper progress and we're pretty much wrapped up here. Before we screw everything down and lock everything down, what do you want to do? You want to test it because you don't want to go back and like go through this entire process again. So what I did is I kicked on the power on the boat and then on the box, to, I have a trolling motor reset, turned it on and uh, I don't know, Nathan, hit that pedal. What do we got? We got, we got movement, baby. We got movement. We still got to put the prop on this thing, but hey dude, I think... Uh, we're getting there. I think Mikey got a new goat, dude. <laughs> season. Let's wrap this thing up. So on these trolling motors, they can be used at 24 volts or 36 volts. So I have a 36 volt system, but you need to, to change it. So Nathan, how do we change this thing so it's on my 36 volt? So it's really simple. All you do is hold down these two back buttons here until you hear the beep. And you'll see the 24 and the 36 volts start blinking. Then you'll hit this test button until you're on the one that you want. So you can go back and forth, 36. So that's the one we want. So we'll hold this test button down. All right, that locks it. Now you wanna get out of the configuration mode. So you're gonna hold these two buttons down again. And this is really cool because if you ever have a battery go bad while you're out there fishing, and now you only have 24 volts versus 36, you can switch this trolling motor as simple as that to a 24 volt system and still get a hundred uh, or 97 pounds of thrust uh, for the rest of the day and get you through the day until you can get back and get a new battery. All right, so real quick, we're gonna get this prop on here. You can see there's, there's just like a little indentation right there. You wanna match that with that, that cross nut right there that goes through the, that shaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and line it up. 
slide it on just like that. Sometimes it is going to take a little pop. Try not to get your finger in there just like it did. And then in the bag, you're going to have a nut and a washer. And I'm going to go ahead and pop that washer right on the end here. And then it's a lock nut, so I'm going to just hand thread it on. And then what I'm going to do is go grab a ratchet and uh, finish her off. And then she'll be good to go. My homies, Mikey Balls now has a Lawrence Ghost trolling motor. And I can't thank anybody more than this guy, Nathan Martin. Uh, Nathan, tell me, where can they find you on Instagram? Where can they find you know your shop, all that kind of information if they want to get one installed? Uh, Seeklerpower.com. We have all of our links to our social media there. Pretty much Seekler Power anything. Facebook, Instagram, we're on all of that. Um, or Nathan Martin Fishing. If you want to message me on that, you can find me anywhere. This kid is an absolute stick up here in Northwest Alabama. Not only does he install trolling motors, do awesome graph rigging, but he catches some mondos, dude. And if you're ever looking for a guide trip, he does some epic smallmouth guiding up here on Lake Wilson, Pickwick, dude. He's great dude, great angler, and seriously, a true professional. So I'm super stoked to get this out. We're making this simply an install video. I'm gonna do a little review video once I get it on the water and test it out. But she looks beautiful. Power's on, pedal works. She's set to 36 volts. Looks like a freaking robot, Robocop on here. I'm super fired up. I've never had spot lock. And having the brushless motor and the lithium batteries, I got my Battleborn lithium batteries, that paired up. And, and no interference. All the, your transducers are all integrated in here. I can't wait to see how it works. If you guys got any questions about the install, hit up Nathan, drop them down in the comments box. Any questions, anything along those lines, and I'll try to get a review video out to you. Thank you guys for watching this install video, and uh, thanks for supporting the channel. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. We'll let you know how the ghost does out on the water, all right? <laughs>